So we're reading from Daniel chapter 9 then. We're going to have a two week interval, it'll be this week and next week. A two week interval from Revelation to look at the prophecy of the 70 weeks that will help us to put the coming chapters of Revelation 12, 13 and so on into, the, into this framework and see where we get the seven year of the tribulation from. So it's Daniel chapter 9 and we're looking at the, what's called the 70 week prophecy but we'll start to read at verse 20. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks the streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, as I say, we're going to take just two weeks of an interval to look at the 70 week prophecy so that we can, you know, get the following chapters of Revelation uh, in, a, in this context. Um, three and a half years, the mention of three and a half years occurs several times in the chapters we're going to look at in Revelation. And that's obviously, well, I believe it to be the second half, that three and a half years, the second half of a seven year period in which God is dealing particularly with Israel. That's what this prophecy is all about. Um, and I'm approaching, uh, as we have done these last messages in Revelation, uh, the main body of the Revelation, with this seven year period in mind because of this prophecy here. Um, and so tonight is a revisit of what we studied last year. Um, mainly for those that were not here but also for any that might want this extra light maybe that's listening on YouTube. And I'm going to divide it up into two sections generally tonight. The first will consider the period of time that the prophecy refers to on biblical grounds. We're going to use the Bible itself to see how long and when the start and when the finish of the 69 weeks are. Uh, and the 70th week we're going to look at in more detail uh, next week but we're going to look concentrate mainly on the first 69 weeks tonight see where they begin where they end how long they are and so forth and then we can draw conclusions tonight from about the 70th week and look at it in more detail next week the second section we'll look at the um the 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 69 weeks in the light of recorded history and our modern calendar and then finally we'll put the two things together uh, and see how they compare just before we start looking at those dates and days and dates and making, that, making those calculations, I just want to say two brief things. First of all, why this prophecy is important. Uh, one of the a really good book on the subject is by a guy called Albert J. McLean. It's only a little booklet and it deals specifically with this. Very helpful. And he says the 70 week prophecy is, quote, the indispensable chronological key to all New Testament prophecy. I'm inclined to agree with that. It is a context for the books of the Gospels and the Revelation. Um, if it has been thus far accurately fulfilled, it stands a strong proof uh, of, the, of the divine inspiration of Scripture. That is to say, if the 69 weeks, if we can show that the 69 weeks, as prophesied here, have been fulfilled and were miraculously fulfilled after Daniel wrote them, which is obviously when they happened, then there's a real strong proof there for the inspiration of Scripture. One of the guys I like to watch occasionally on, on YouTube is a guy called Dave Hunt. He's an American. You might have heard of him. And uh, he often says that fulfilled prophecy is one of the strongest proofs of the inspiration of Scripture. And of course it is. 
Um, and because of that, the Book of Daniel came under serious attack uh, in the 1800s, the mid-1800s, by Bible critics. Uh, many of those attacks started in Germany. Some of the English critics got their information from those so-called German scholars and began to, uh, began to sow the same uh, unbelieving ideas over here in the middle of the 1800s. Um, but there were two men, it seems to me, there were two men that God strongly raised up, one in this country, one in America, um, Robert Anderson over here, and a man called Robert Dick Wilson in America, and they gave very strong arguments for the authenticity of the book as it stands, that the fact that it was written by Daniel exactly as it says uh, in around uh, the, the 5th or 6th century BC. Um, what the critics tried to do was in order to, to get rid of the, the miraculous nature of the book and the miraculous nature of the prophecy, they said it wasn't really Daniel. It wasn't written by a Daniel who was contemporary with Nebuchadnezzar. It was written much, much later, around about the 2nd century BC, um, and therefore... Uh, you know, they, they thought that by that they could de de deprive it of its, of its miraculous content. Um, but even so, it seems to me that because the prophecy that we're looking at, uh, the six or nine weeks end in the time of Christ, it would have still be, it was still fulfilled. Um, and if the Daniel had written it even in the second century BC, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't really prove anything. I don't believe that. And uh, if you want some really good stuff on that, Robert Anderson is the man to look at. So that's my first brief point. The prophecy is important. It's been under attack, but it's authentic. Um, secondly, we just need to underscore who the subject of the prophecy is. And without question, it's Daniel's people and Daniel's city. Uh, we've, this is tremendous prayer. There's some Here and there in the Bible, there are some wonderful prayers. There's one from Abraham in Genesis 18. There's one from Solomon in 1 Kings uh, chapter 8. There's many of them in Daniel, of course, recorded in the psalm. And this is one of the great tremendous inter intercessory prayers in scripture here uh, in the chapter 9 of Daniel um, and Daniel has been praying in the first half of this chapter he's been praying for his people um, and in, in verse 16 it says for example in chapter 9 verse 16 he says I beseech thee let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem thy, thy holy mountain so he's praying for the city and he's praying uh, for Jerusalem and also in verse 17 we read um, cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary and he's talking about his own people he's talking about Jerusalem he's talking about the holy city um, so what we're going to do um, this week and next week I'm going to give my reasons for believing that the 69 weeks are history but the 70th week is still in the future and how that happens is what the, those details we're going, to, we're going to look at next week but if that's true, then there is a future, of course, for Daniel's people, for Daniel's city. If that 70 week hasn't been fulfilled, and it has to do with Daniel's people and Daniel's city, namely the Jews in Jerusalem, then there's a future for them, which is what, what I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, believe. So we look at these two chronologies, first of all the Bible, and then secondly history and the modern calendar, and, and see what, what they have to, to say, how they uh, interrelate with one another. So we read in verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. And um, the first question we need to ask is, what, what, what kind of weeks are these? Exactly what does that mean? Does that mean uh, 70 weeks of days, which is about 16 months? Uh, I don't think that's possible, because it says after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So if, if Daniel's writing here in the 6th century BC, it's not possible uh, that, that he could be talking about ordinary weeks of days. Uh, I've heard some preachers say, you know, that we're wrong to take it as, as weeks of years, which is what I'm going to do, but weeks of days makes no sense. Um, so the commandment was, was to restore and to build Jerusalem, uh, and that, that would be done, of course, centuries before the Lord Jesus was born. Now the Hebrew word translated weeks, and I'm not trying to tell you here, as so many do, that you need to go back to the Hebrew okay 70 weeks is what we've got in our english bible 70 weeks is good enough for me mm. but just for your information okay to try and help clarify things a little and you'll see why i'm referring to the hebrew as well the hebrew word translated weeks refers to a week of years so 70 weeks is 70 times seven years not 70 <coughs> weeks a day and there's a clue that this is the case if you look at the next chapter uh, chapter 10 i don't know whether any of this is coming back to uh, 
to John and Sheila and Gene. The funny thing is, I spent all that time studying this. It's amazing how much you forget. When I, mean, I came back to it, you know, I had to refresh my memory on so much of it. So hopefully the same will be for you. But in chapter 10 and verse 2, notice there Daniel says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. And look, if you've got a marginal note, um, the marginal notes in my Bible are the same as they were in the original 1611 printing. There's a marginal note saying Hebrew, weeks of days. So we're being told in chapter 10 that when he talks about weeks, the Hebrew says weeks of days. But it doesn't say that in chapter 9. It doesn't say in the margin, again, 70 weeks, weeks of days. So the translators are making a distinction. There's, a, there's clearly a distinction in the Hebrew. It doesn't say weeks of days uh, in verse 24. That suggests that they are not weeks of days. Furthermore, the Jews were very familiar with the division of their years into sevens, as you may know. If you want to look with me at Le Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus, that's just after Exodus, isn't it? Uh, chapter 25, third book in the Bible. Two verses from there. Leviticus 25, verse 3. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the, field, for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. In other words, every seventh year they were to leave it to lie fallow. And then they would have six years again of, of planting and harvesting, and the seventh year they would leave it to lie fallow. Um, uh, that, that Sabbath for the land is very important, as we shall see later on. So the, the concept of weeks of years wouldn't be at all a strange thing to the Jews of those times. And furthermore, as we're going to look at just in a moment, the Jews were in captivity for ba in Babylon for 70 years. We're going to read that prophecy in Jeremiah that Daniel himself refers to. They were in captivity in Babylon for 70 years because they had not given the land those Sabbaths. So over a period, preceding period of 490 years, the land, the land had not been laying fallow every seventh year. So God gives them, gives the land, if you will, takes them captivity and gives the land that rest for the 70 years that it should have had over a 490 year period. Have a look at 2 Chronicles chapter 36, where we read about this. 2 Chronicles and chapter 36. two verses from here, verse 20 and verse 21. Second Chronicles, chapter 36, that's the last chapter, last chapter of Second Chronicles, just before Ezra, verse 20. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons, until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. And then if you look at that prophecy that's referred to, it's in Jeremiah 25. So you've just got to go from down, you'll go, go to the left a couple of books, back to Jeremiah and 25. And we'll read two verses from there. Uh, verse 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. Now if you come back to Daniel chapter 9, and read just verse 1 with me here, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So da uh, Daniel is familiar with Jeremiah's prophecy, maybe with Second Kings and Second Chronicles as well. He realises that time is about up, and that's why he's praying here for the restoration of the land. Now, Albert, Albert J. McLean, who I've mentioned, says this 
Uh, since according to 2 Chronicles 36.21, which we've just read together, the Jews had been removed off the land in order that it might rest for 70 years, it should be evident that the sabbatic year had been violated for 490 years, or exactly seven, 70 sevens of years. And this period of 490, that's the end of the quote from Alvin McLean, this period of 490 years occurs frequently uh, in God's dealings with Israel. We'll look at one of those, a very interesting one <clears throat> next week that just shows you this, this 490 year cycle keeps coming up in the history of Israel. And you remember what Peter said to Jesus, if my brother sin against me, uh, how often should I forgive him? Even seven times. And Jesus said, even 70 times seven. Well, that's 490. Um, and maybe there's a connection there with these periods with which God dealt with Israel. Um, so if we're correct in understanding the weeks as weeks of, of seven years, and I believe, I believe that's true, we expect that the last week, the 70th, shall also be seven, seven years, and that's consistent with what we find in the book of the Revelation. Um, and there is, you know, you might say, well, how come there's a long gap? If, if the 69th year ends with the coming of Messiah, how come the seventh, 70th week um, is still in the future? What about this long gap? And that, the reason for that long gap <coughs> we'll look at next week. I just want to concentrate on the time scale of the 69 weeks this week. So the, the events of Revelation from chapter 4 on have not yet occurred. Um, and when we get into the next chapters, 12, 13, 14, Revelation, we're going to keep reading about this period of three and a half years. Um, but let's, let's look at the calculations, first of all, from the Bible. Um, 70 weeks then, seven years for each week makes 490 years. The next thing is, we're going, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to find out how many days that is. Uh, and to get at that, we need to know, first of all, how many days were in these Jewish years. Because the Jewish calendar, the biblical calendar, is not the same as the one we use now. I mean, as you know, we, had a, we have a leap year every fourth years because um, the, the year actually is 365 and a quarter days. And we'll get into all this next week. We're, we're working on what's called the Gregorian calendar at the moment. It was changed in the 1700s. You might remember I bored you to death with this last time, but uh, it, might, it might need clarifying when we look at some of the figures. So how long are the years in, in the Jewish calendar? How long are the years, in, number of days in the years in the, in the Bible? Uh, and we can calculate that from Scripture. First of all, we're going to find out the length of a month. So we go to Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, which is the, the flood account, of course. And we're going to read a verse from there and a verse from chapter 8. Genesis 7 tells us when the flood started, and Genesis 8 tells us when the flood finished. Genesis 7 verse 11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, note this now, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. So it was the, it was the 600th year of Noah's life, it was the second month, and it was the 17th day of the month. That's when the flood began. Then if you go to chapter 8 and verse 4, we'll see when he ends. The ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. So it began on the second month, the seventeenth day, and the ark rested on the seventh month, on the seventeenth day. So to the day, that's exactly five months. Now if you look at chapter 7 again and verse 24, we read, The waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. And again in chapter 8 and verse 3. The waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the 150 days the waters were abated. So the waters were on the earth we're told for 150 days which is 5 months. Therefore a month is 30 days because 5 times 30 is 130. So here in the book of Genesis a month is a 30 day month. Uh, and it seems that that's the way it works right through scripture. So that's the first thing we need, to, we need to keep in mind, that a month in the Bible uh, is, is 30 days. And when we go into the Revelation, uh, actually about two and a half thousand years later, of course, uh, we still find again that a, year, a month rather equals 30 days. Let's just look at a few passages that we're going to get into in a week or two. Revelation 12, we'll just compare the years here with the months and the days. Revelation 12. 
verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, um, I don't know whether we've covered this at all in our previous messages in, in the Revelation. I know I've, I've discussed what a time and a time and so forth is. A time is a year. So a time and times and half a time is three and a half years. Uh, I haven't got time to go into it tonight, but it's, it's, I think it's very interesting that when you look at uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the third chapter of the book of Daniel, you find that the furnace is made seven times hotter. Now, I know that means the heat is multiplied seven times, but the terminology is very interesting because that speaks of the persecution of Israel under Antichrist. It's a prophetic picture of a, pro of a, of a persecution that's to come, and it says the furnace was seven times hotter. You get into the next chapter, chapter 4, and you read about Nebuchadnezzar going mad, and you find he's driven out and he lives with the beast uh, until seven times pass over him, and that means seven years. And again, it's the madness of the Gentile nations, the beasts that we see in chapter 13. And again, we have, a, we have a prophetic reference, I believe, to the seven times, which is seven years. So in Revelation 12, 14, a time and times and half a time is three and a half years. In Revelation 13 and verse 5, there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Well, three years is thirty-six months. Three and a half years is forty-two months. So this is going on at the same time. It's it's looking at things from a different perspective. This persecution of Israel uh, that's going on in chapter twelve um, is being carried out by this beast that we're reading about in chapter thirteen, and here it's described as forty and two months. But if you go back to chapter twelve and look at verse six. We read it described there in terms of days. The woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days is three and a half years at thirty days per month. Forty two months, multiply that by um, thirty, it's 1,260. So these are all the same period described in different ways. But again, you've got a 30-day month. So back in Genesis and in Revelation, the months are described as 30-day months. And so with that, we can now look at the 490-year uh, period or, or the 69 weeks, which is 483 years, and work out how many days that is. Uh, so 69 weeks, if it were 70 weeks, it'd be 490 years. 69 weeks up until Messiah the Prince, therefore, not counting the week that's to come, is 483 years. You've got to take seven off, so it's 483 years. Now, if a year is 12 months of 30 days per month, that's 360 days in a year. I should have told you to bring your calculators tonight. We did this last time, so you can check me out. But you can, I can give you the details, the figures, if you want them afterwards. They're in the coming prints, as, as you probably know. They're also in Alva McLean. Um, so 69 years, sorry, 69 weeks of seven years is 483 years. A year is 360 days, which is 12 times 30. So you multiply now the 483 years by 360 days, and you get 173,880 days. Remember that number. <laughs> 173,880 days from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. That's the 69 weeks. That's what it says in Daniel 9. From the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be, it says, uh, one week and three score and two weeks, I think it says. Or is it seven? Seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's 69. So 173,880 days between those two, the start and the finish, the 69 week period. Uh, and it ends with what's, what's referred to as unto Messiah the Prince. So that's the scriptural um, chronology. Let's, let's compare that with history. So the 69 weeks begins from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Now we look at, need to look to find out when that was. And we'll go to Nehemiah. I'm getting through this much more quickly than I thought I would have done, but that's okay. Nehemiah. 
um, chapter 2 and it's in Nehemiah chapter 2 where we read of the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Nehemiah is the king's cupbearer. He's in Persia. He's the cupbearer to Artaxerxes. And in chapter 2 verse 1 it says, It came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live for ever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favour in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me, to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. So, we need to make the distinction here. Nehemiah is going to build the city. He's not going to build the temple. Ezra had gone earlier for the rebuilding of the temple. Nehemiah is going for the rebuilding of the city. And what we're reading about in Daniel is the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build the city. Mm -hmm. And this is that going forth of that commandment here is given to Nehemiah in this chapter. And in verse 1 we read, It came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, uh, so that's when the 69 weeks begins. It begins in the 20th year of our tax Xerxes, the king, in the month Nisan. Uh, now again, I'll, I'll, read, I'll quote you from A.J. McLean. He says, The date fixed by Nehemiah happens to be one of the best known dates in ancient history. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica, certainly not biased in favour of prophecy, sets the date of our tax Xerxes accession at 465 B.C., and therefore his 20th year would be 445 BC. So that's the year, 445 BC, that's the 20th year of Artaxerxes. The month, says Alva McLean, was Nisan, and since no day is given, according to Jewish custom, the date would be understood as the first. And then he basing his calculations on Robert Anderson says, in our calendar, that's the 14th of March, 445 BC. So that's the going forth of the commandment. The, the first of Nisan, which in our calendar is the 14th of March, 445 BC. That's when the 69 weeks begins, or the 173,880 days. So then when do they end? Daniel says, unto Messiah the Prince. Now again, the calculations on this are pretty complex. If you've read The Coming Prince, I don't know if you've seen it, read it all, Paul. Uh, but the, the calculations are, are pretty complex. Robert Anderson says it was, it was on a Palm Sunday, the day that the Lord Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Uh, and that was prophesied by Zechariah. Let's just have a look at Zechariah for a moment. Uh, chapter 9. And verse 9. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the fall of the mass. And of course this is fulfilled on Palm Sunday. The king comes riding into Jerusalem on this colt on Palm Sunday. Let's look at it in Luke 19, where we have the gospel record of it. Luke's gospel, chapter 19, uh, verse 37. Luke 19 and 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King 
that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. <coughs> and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. Um, I think this thy day is a reference to this, the fulfilment. If they had done the maths, if they had studied Daniel and done the maths, they would have been expecting that the Lord to come. Uh, you know, they would have recognised when Jesus rode in Jerusalem that this was in fulfilment uh, of that prophecy. So what was the date of that Palm Sunday then that the Lord Jesus rolled, uh, rode into Jerusalem? Well, again, uh, Robert Anderson's calculations are pretty complex. He bases them on the Gospel records, details of the new moon, which determined the date of the Passover, and also in the coming prints you'll find his letter he wrote to the Astronomer Royal, and the letter from the Astronomer Royal is printed in Anderson's book, and he gives the date exactly as the 6th of April 32 AD, the date of Palm Sunday, the 6th of April 32 AD. So now we know from the Bible we've got 69 weeks of seven years each, that's 483. We know that a month is 30 days, and if we multiply that 483 by uh, 30 by 12, we get 173,880 days. So that's what the Bible's telling us. Now we're looking at the dates. Now what we need to work out is how long is it on our calendar from the 14th of March, 445 BC, to the 6th of April, 32 AD, because that's the period that's covered by the, um, the 69 weeks. Now I used the flip chart last time. I'm, um, I can give you the figures if you want them afterwards. Uh, but first of all, you've got to add up the years, 445 BC, and 32 AD, so we've got a period of 477 years. But you've got to take a year off because there's no year zero, and I'll, I'll explain that again next week. So actually, in terms of years, it's 476 years. And then you've got to multiply that using our calendar by 365 days in the year. So you get a, we're getting really close now, you get 173,740. But then you've got to add on the leap years, and over a 476 year period, you divide that by 4, you get 119. I'll explain this next week, okay? Just take my word for it, I'll show you next week. You've got to take 3 off because of a change from that calendar to the Gregorian calendar which we use. So, um, you've got to add, for the leap years, you've got to add on another 116 days. So you've got 173,740 plus 116 days, we're now up to 173,856 days. So we're 24 days short. But then you've also got to add on the 14th of March to the 6th of April, that's 24 days. So you come out with 173,880 days. So what we find from history is an exact fulfilment of prophecy to the day from the time that the going forth of the commandment the 14th of March, 445 BC, BC, to the time that the Lord Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the 6th of April, 32 AD, is exactly 173,880 days, which is what you would find it to be if you did the maths as we have done from the Bible itself. Uh, now, you know, you might, uh, Jean said to me last time, you know, I don't get that leap year thing, and I don't get that missing year, so we will just look at that in a bit more detail. Uh, that Gregorian thing can get pretty complicated as well, but I'll try and keep it simple uh, as much as I can because, you know, it's got to be simple for me, let's face it. Um, so, if that being the case, the, the 69th week finished when the Lord Jesus rode into Jerusalem. There's a week left. And they, they, at that point, they, they rejected the Lord finally. Uh, you know, the, the, the people were, were saying, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Um, when he came in in fulfilment of prophecy. Uh, and, you know, the, the Lord really turned away from Jerusalem at that time. Although I think when uh, Stephen is preaching, I think another, another offer is made. The kingdom is offered again by the Holy Spirit through Stephen. And again, he is stoned. That was their final rejection. And then you find Paul is called and he's sent to the Gentiles. So 
with the rejection of the Lord Jesus, with the rejection of the final offer through the Holy Ghost, um, the ministry goes, you know, God finishes with Israel as a nation at that time and the ministry starts to go to the Gentiles. And that has gone on now, of course, um, since, the, since the rejection of the Lord, since, I said probably specifically since the time uh, that they rejected the message through Stephen, we're in what's called the times of the Gentiles, that, that we're in a period, uh, the church, the dispensation of the church, and when we go, at the, at, as we do in the fourth chapter of Revelation, that clock starts to tick again. So we've got the final week then coming up. And that's where I get the seven weeks from. That's where those prophecy teachers uh, who speak about Daniel, the, the, book of, the book of Revelation rather, covering the seven year period, that's where we get it from. We get it from this 70th week that remains. Um, from the book of Daniel. Now your question might be, and again we will address this next week, how come that the 69 weeks all followed on one another and now there's a great big long gap? And that's something that some people have a real problem with. How come there's a long gap between the end of the 69th week um, and the start of the 70th week? And I think I'm gonna leave that till next week. I didn't think I'd get through this this quickly, but I'll leave that till next week. And we'll start off by looking at reasons from the Bible. And there are some good reasons in the Bible why there's a space between the 69th and the 70th week. And we'll also look at some of these mathematical difficulties that you might have. Um, and hopefully, you know, by the time we finish next week, we'll be, we'll be all satisfied that we're, we're dealing with sound biblical facts when we're talking about one week, a seven year week remaining. Um, we read in Daniel, didn't we, about the one week in which he makes a covenant and in the midst of the week, the covenant is broken. And of course, in the middle of seven years, is three and a half years, and that's exactly what we find going on in the chapters that come. The Antichrist breaks off his covenant of peace with Israel, begins to persecute them for the last three and a half years. So it all fits in, it seems to me, with, uh, with what we read in there in the book of Daniel. So that's where I get the 70 years from. And we'll leave it there for tonight.